our room was the first one to receive a transgender. Nobody was notified. Nobody asked, meaning the higher-ups, the warden. Nobody asked our opinions or our thoughts or concerns. What little rights that we did have as inmates have been diminished with the trans men who've come in. We're a forgotten entity. Like, women's rights in a women's prison do not exist. California has passed legislation allowing transgender inmates in the state's correctional facilities to be assigned housing based on their gender identity. So my name is Jennifer and I'm formerly incarcerated. I did 15 years on a 22 year sentence. Growing up, I suppressed a lot of anger. There was some sexual trauma going on as an adolescent. And so I just took to doing drugs and I took to the streets, which the gang lifestyle embraced me. So I found like a sense of home there and one thing led to another, and I was incarcerated for attempted murder, assault with a deadly weapon, and gang enhancements. I was incarcerated at Central California Women's Facility in Chowchilla, California. I would get up early in the morning, read my Bible. Now I would go to work at the dental lab, and I was a full-time employee there, and then I went to college at night. The transgender inmates started coming, uh, I want to say during COVID. They were just slowly being incorporated into general population. We're getting the predators, people who have been incarcerated for rape, um, men who have been incarcerated for oral copulation, men who have been incarcerated for crimes against women. We were very nervous, angry. We weren't given a voice kind of a tough girl, <laughs> so I know I could stand my ground. But living in such close quarters with someone of the opposite sex, when we have a shower and the toilet is in the same room and the door is locked at night, it's a little intimidating, not knowing what to expect. But it would be nice to be included in such a drastic change that was happening in the women's facility at the time. Ava Reeves. We came home from work and she was there. They moved one of our roommates out and moved Ava in. Ava's very tall and has had physical altercations with women. Immediately I went to our housing staff to voice my concern because Ava Reeves had a reputation that preceded her from a different yard and we didn't want that type of person or activity in the room because we were all positive programming and trying to focus on getting home. The officers states their hands are tied. If we're so uncomfortable with living with that individual that we could pack up and they would find us a, a new spot to live. And it seems like their rights overrode ours. If someone didn't want a transgender man in their room, they were asked to move, and the transgender would have the room to themselves. And this room normally houses eight women, so they were willing to move seven women for one man. For us, we would love to have a room to ourselves because every day you're constantly around people. You have no peace of mind. There's no solitude in prison. So to be afforded a single cell, people would love to have that, but it was never afforded to the women. It was just to the men. One of our housing staff who was willing to 
try and make things work because she knew it was uncomfortable and she didn't agree, but she stated that she couldn't speak up against the situation because of all the lawyers that were involved for the transgender men and she wasn't willing to risk her job for us. But she did make some moves, so eventually, a week later, Ava Reeves was able to move to a different room in the same unit. When the transgender men came over, it's like the women's rights were eliminated, and it came, became about the transgender rights. For example, we used to have a women's advisory council and once the transgender men came, it, they changed the name to inmate advisory council. Prior to me being released, um, we started being referred to as incarcerated people. We're clearly getting the message that we as women don't have any rights and that we don't matter. It's SB 132 might have been geared for people on the free world, but once you put institution in place, it becomes something different. It becomes a, a catch-22 for the manipulators in the men's institution to seek refuge somewhere else. The majority of men who came from the men's facility into the women's facility all now have girlfriends, and they all live with them. There is a one man who came and he wore pigtails and lipstick and pink shirts for the first three months. And after that, he cut his hair short, almost bald, and started wearing Levi's and white t-shirts to resemble a man again. I got a girlfriend, lived with her, and there was domestic violence there. Women who have been through trauma Women who have been through domestic violence situations are at risk again. They've already suffered, committed their crime, and are trying to find healing, but now the healing is gone because now you have men in the institution and they have to start that process from square one. I don't speak against the trans community in a negative aspect. I speak out today for the women I left behind who don't have a voice. And a lot of ladies there would love to speak out, but there, there comes retaliation, fear of the men, physical harm, fear of the lawyers, fear of losing their day to come home. What little rights that we did have as inmates have been diminished with the trans men who've come in. They're taking our voice, they're taking our rights, and they're taking our womanhood away from us.